Hello, I am Dr. Tarun Bhatnagar, Scientist E at ICMR's National Institute of Epidemiology in Chennai. And today I am going to talk to you about the language and writing style to be followed in writing a scientific manuscript. The objective of this session is to use a writing style that will deliver the message. For this purpose, we will be talking about the six S's of scientific writing, including that the writing should be simple, short, structured, sequential, strong, and specific. So what does each of this mean? By simple, we mean that we need to use simple words to explain whatever we need to write such that even the non-technical or the lay persons can also get an understanding of uh, the matter that we are trying to write in the manuscript. Although we are in a technical field, it would always be prudent to use as less as possible of technical and statistical jargon as possible unless it cannot be avoided. The language must be familiar and easy to read by all types of audiences. Let's look at this example. Primary data on number of cases and death for two age groups under five and above five due to diseases or syndromes listed above are collected using a uniform format by all reporting units. Suppose this was one of the sentences that you wrote or saw in a manuscript. How do you think you could make, write it in a more simple manner? Uh, I'll give you some time to think about it and try to reframe or rephrase this statement as simple as possible. So one of the ways in which we could write this in a much more simple and clear manner could be that facilities report cases and deaths for 12 diseases among two age groups. So as you can see, we've avoided a lot of unnecessary terminologies and unnecessary details in this writing and still uh, are able to deliver the correct and the right message to the audience. Another way to make a writing simple is to avoid pompous words, words that seem pretty big or uh, unnecessarily making our language sound uh, much more fancier than we would like it to be. So for example, uh, I, this is a list where uh, words that you could avoid such as accomplish, performed, visualize, initiate, prior to, quantification, and we could use much, we would prefer to use much simpler words for each of these such as do uh, for accomplish or see for visualize and so forth. We would also want to avoid a sense of grandiloquence uh, when we are writing scientific manuscripts use of abstract words, words which are vague, words which may be foreign to the English language, words that are maybe fancy, offbeat, or sometimes they may not even be proper words should definitely be avoided while writing scientific manuscripts. Again, we need to avoid grandstanding in general when we are writing, uh, such as uh, saying that this is the first study of its kind, or the first people to do this study, uh, things like this preeminence and claims of precedence uh, are, need not find space in a manuscript. Again, uh, words that suggest that are suggestive of any kind of prejudice, uh, superlatives, great, awesome, uh, unindicated words, underlining words, again need to be avoided. And another interesting thing that needs to be avoided is the use of exclamation marks in uh, a scientific manuscript because uh, these are more for uh, lay writing or where you want to give an emphasis but find no place in scientific writing. Some of the expressions to avoid, for example, could be expressions, English words uh, that uh, are, are more colloquial such as mom, kid, lab, mini lab. So better to write uh, mother, child, uh, laboratory or, or a full word such as mini laparotomy, etc. Uh, there are some words which are unnecessarily long, such as and which are kind of redundant, 
including such as maternal parent, you could just write it as mother uh, or a pediatric patient could just write it as a child. Uh, again, a long string of nouns can also be avoided. Uh, one example that we have here on your screens uh, is something like the name of a program such as say here the doctor workload reduction program which uh, may be more simply put as a program to reduce the workload of doctors. So again, uh, remember that uh, specific nouns and uh, names which are specific to your setting may not be something that is understandable uh, to uh, the audience that is reading your manuscript uh, globally. And so it is always better to use words and phrases uh, which are more generic in nature but still help to drive home the message appropriately. Another uh, common mistakes that we have seen is the use of dangling participle in sentences, uh, such as for example, if you look at a sentence here which says the doctor having admitted the patient examined the abdomen or having admitted the patient, the doctor examined the abdomen or having admitted the patient, the abdomen was examined. So here having ad admitted the patient is the dangling participle and uh, it leaves uh, a space uh, for uh, vagueness and also for unnecessarily making the sentence more complex. And so this could be written in a much simpler way stating that the doctor admitted the patient and examined his abdomen. Another thing to avoid in our writing is the sense of misdirection or indirection uh, which uh, does not help us to give the right message and what we are trying to say especially in a sequential manner. So let's look at some examples of how we can get rid of this sense of indirection in the writing. So the one sentence here uh, that you see on your screen. Uh, the 36 unit apartment building burned in just two hours. Uh, I'll give you some time to think about how you can get rid of indirection here and make this more straightforward and simple. So we could state this as the apartment building burned in just two hours. It had 36 units. Let's look at some other examples that you can work on. Acme Real Estate, the tri-state's third largest commercial real estate firm will purchase allied real estate. Why don't you try and uh, make this more simpler? Again, this could be uh, written in two simple straightforward sentences stating Acme real estate will purchase allied real estate. And the second sentence as Acme is the tri-state's third largest commercial real estate firm. So there is uh, in fact no need to try and combine multiple sentences into one long sentence. Uh, which uh, becomes one, uh, difficult to read and secondly may not uh, give you, may not give the audience the appropriate message that you are trying to convey through your writing. The next S that we need to be mindful of as I mentioned just now is to keep the writing short. So use short sentences uh, conveying one idea at a time. Uh, again, if you have complex sentences, sentences which have uh, and, but, therefore, henceforth, etc. Uh, those are pointers to you to say that, to uh, make sure that you actually cut down those sentences into shorter sentences. The idea is to be concise and brief and cut out all the unnecessary elements from your writing so that, so as to make it uh, much more clearer and shorter. Again, remember that in scientific writing, when you are submitting your uh, manuscripts to journals, uh, way, uh, different journals provide uh, different word limits for uh, various kinds of manuscripts and uh, we have to limit our manuscript within that word limit. And again, writing short sentences and not using unnecessary elements would help us to stay within that budget of words that the journal provides you with. So say it well, say it once and say it at the right place. So avoid writing the same information, providing the same information in multiple places in the manuscript. Something that you have written in the methods need not be repeated in the results. 
something that is written in one table may not be repeated in another table or a graph or something that could be written in the text may not always be present in the table and everything that is present in the table or a figure uh, need not be written out as text uh, in your results section. Again, as I said, keep it simple, keep it short, uh, no need to sort of write too many words and too many sentences. And one example that you should see here, these are just two sentences, but it looks like a long big paragraph. And one example of how verbose your writing could be, uh, again, which makes you difficult to stick to that uh, word limit that the journal may uh, subscribe to and also makes it difficult to understand uh, for the readers. This entire sentence could be written much more simply uh, as currently uh, no treatment is recommended for HBS AG positive patients with normal ALT since they respond poorly to all the available drugs. So again keeping it short and simple. Uh, there are certain words that we may tend to use colloquially or maybe in our habit while when we speak. However, again we need to be much more mindful when you are writing a scientific manuscript to make sure that you are not using redundant words. Uh, for example, some of the lists that you see on your screen are uh, already existing, uh, alternative choices. Again, you are it's you could say alternatives or you could mention choices, you could say the existing methods were used. Other examples included the present time, basic fundamentals, uh, currently underway, still persisted, uh, none at all, etc. Again, uh, use of too many words and uh, two words or more than two words being used to say give the same message that can always be avoided and we can make you sure that you are using smaller words and you are using words which are specific uh, to the message that you are trying to convey. Again, one other more examples on ways in which you can deal with redundancy and repetitions in your writing and making your short, long sentences shorter uh, is what is here in this screen now. Uh, so for example, instead of writing the question as to whether uh, our findings uh, can be generalized, etc., etc., could be written simply as directly whether our findings can be generalized uh, need not be uh, said from what we are showing, etc., etc. So, again, as you can see, you can actually replace these four to five long uh, letter long sentences in one or two phrase sentences, which can help you to again. Uh, stick to the word limit and al also uh, not become redundant. The next uh, S to be mindful of while scientific writing, they are writing to be as structured as possible. Remember that you are not writing uh, a poem or a story or, or a news item and uh, most of the scientific writing would fall into a certain structure. The structure uh, would be something that may be given and prescribed by the journal themselves as each journal has its own structure and the structure and in general we would uh, expect uh, a scientific writing uh, output to be structured and follow a logical argument in the way it is presented in its writing. So one way to do that is use of what we call as an argument matrix or a high level outline when you start writing your manuscript. You can prepare a skeleton of the report in bullet points and outline various sections in terms of the titles, the format of the words, uh, what paragraphs, uh, what ideas would go into each paragraph, uh, what would be the list of tables and figures that you would like to provide in your manuscript and eventually uh, remember that if you, you would always be writing with a team and you reach consensus with all your co-authors in terms of initially what the outline of your manuscript could be and then as you go along expand this outline uh, with the specific, uh, specific material that you would put into that which would help you to, uh, one is to keep you structured, uh, make, make sure you are logical in the way you are presenting your material and it also helps you to remove redundancy and to remove 
anything additional material that may not even be required in your manuscript. You, the manuscript needs to uh, provide uh, information in a sequential manner, which helps the readers to also understand why the study was done, how was it done, what were the findings, what are the implications of the findings, and what are the recommendations and future directions to go to in that particular area. So you need to take the reader step by step, starting each sentence where the previous ended, and use a logical flow of thoughts to uh, showcase uh, your writing. Here are some tips in terms of use of paragraphs when you are writing your manuscript. Each paragraph needs to be talking about one particular idea, and if you see that there are ideas that are mixing up in one paragraph, that gives you a clue that you need to maybe uh, break that paragraph into more than one paragraph so that each idea is specific to one paragraph. Uh, writing that way makes the text look less intimidating, easier to read. Uh, again, paragraphs needs to end with a transition so that it connects to the next thought or the next idea that you would be presenting in the next, the subsequent paragraph. So begin with a sentence in the each paragraph. Uh, it would be good to begin with a sentence that uh, either suggests what you are going to, to be talking about in that paragraph or uh, helps in the transition from the previous one to the next paragraph. And one more important thing is what we say as avoiding one sentence paragraphs. So this is an example of a one sentence paragraph where, so. Uh, my husband insists that single sentence paragraphs may be used in writing rather liberally and even as transitions, although I maintain that they should be used rarely, if ever, and then only for emphasis. Plus, they just look so darn tacky. I'm sure you didn't get much of what I said, and that's because this is a one sentence paragraph, and again, not something that we would recommend in scientific writings. Another thing to, my, to be mindful of is to be sequential, especially when you are talking about specific methods and the way uh, the findings, uh, uh, find the, the findings uh, are written out in your, in your manuscript. So here is another example of uh, a situation or a writing where the sequentiality is, has been missed. Uh, for example, you're talking about uh, an outbreak of cholera and you're writing that the pipeline was repaired on 31st of July. This was followed by a sharp decrease of incidence after one cholera incubation period. Moreover, cholera was isolated from stool specimens. So what do you think is non-sequential here? Which of these three sentences is not in sequence? As you rightly pointed out, it's the last sentence that is not sequential. So we, we have that the pipeline was repaired. Subsequent to that, there was a decrease in cholera cases, which is sequential. However, talking about isolating cholera uh, from the stool specimens does not follow from this sentence and pro probably does not find a place at this point in your writing. The next S to be mindful of is to use, to, is for your writing, to be strong, which means using appropriate verbs and the verbs uh, that are strong enough to convey and the way in which you convey your writing. And remember that every sentence, every uh, verb has to be spelled correctly. For example, uh, we conducted an investigation of the outbreak. One is that it seems like a long sentence. Uh, although it may seem shorter to you. Uh, but uh, again, uh, it does not give, uh, it, it also is a weak sentence. The way to make this stronger is to be direct and say we investigated the outbreak. Other examples to hear in the same lines, we took a sample of the population. I'm sure many of you would have tried to reframe and rephrase this sentence and would have stated it as, we sample the population, which is more direct and which is strong and which conveys with less words. Other examples here, an assessment of the situation was made, which could be rewritten as we assess the situation. 
passive and active voice are two ways in which we write sentences. One example of passive voice is the outbreak was conducted uh, by a team of experts. The same thing in active voice would be a team of experts conducted the outbreak. So what do you think? Uh, which vi ma uh, voice, the passive voice or the active voice sounds appropriate in terms of uh, your writing being strong. In general, what we understand is that passive voice suggests uh, a certain lack of ownership in terms of who actually did it. Uh, it, it also suggests impreciseness and it's probably okay only if uh, the, the topic or the subject that you're talking about is something that is unknown or irrelevant. Uh, however, it's always better to be using active voice in your writing, which reflects that uh, a particular responsibility that is taken by, uh, in terms of the way you are writing, who did it, uh, who found the results and so forth, it becomes more precise. And in general, what we would suggest is to use active voice uh, in a default manner. Of course, uh, ultimately, you would also have to go back to uh, the journal uh, in which you intend to publish your manuscript and see what, is, uh, what are their recommendations to the authors and what is the style that the journal would like you to use. And if the journal prefers you to use passive voice, well, uh, you can't do anything about it. You could uh, accept for not publishing in that journal, not that we are suggesting that. Uh, but otherwise, it, would, it is always preferable to use an active voice. So here are some examples of passive and active voice use. Uh, a study was conducted, a sample was selected, questionnaires were administered, uh, could be written in a much more stronger way in the active voice as you see on your screens now. Of course, uh, we need to be mindful of spellings. Nobody would uh, want spelling errors in their manuscripts. And again, journal editors uh, go pretty hard on manuscripts where they find a lot of spelling errors, especially. So uh, be mindful of the spellings that you're using. Again, nowadays, since we're using computers and you're using either uh, MS Word or any other software uh, to write your manuscript. Uh, be mindful of what the setting is in terms of whether it uses uh, British English or American English or Indian English or any other form of English uh, according to which sometimes the spellings may change. And if you're not uh, aware of uh, what spellings you're using, you could land into trouble with the journal editors. Few examples uh, of uh, words and phrases that could be helpful for you when you are writing and which are commonly used in, in scientific writing. Uh, one example here that you see here is the use of the word fewer uh, versus less. And uh, so you see an example here which says, the patients undergoing laparoscopic surgery had less pain than those undergoing open surgery. The other sentence uses the word fewer instead of less, which states that the patients undergoing laparoscopic surgery spent fewer days in hospital than those undergoing open surgery. So as you can understand here, the word fewer is referring to uh, the number of days, and the word less is referring to the level of pain. So whenever uh, you need to be writing about something that can be counted, use the word few, whereas whenever you something that cannot be counted but something that is subjective, uh, it's better to use the word less. The last of the six S's of scientific writing talks about your writing being specific, saying clearly and exactly what you would want to say, not paraphrasing, using numbers instead of qualifiers, and being precise, which allows uh, specific and only one interpretation from the writing that, and the results of your writing that you are trying to impress upon the readers. For example, here are two examples here. 
uh, which uh, again, you could take a shot at making these sense statements more specific. The first one here says, the village was very affected and the disease was severe. And the second state sentence here is, health workers are not aware of case definitions. So how could you make these two statements more specific? As I mentioned earlier, uh, one way to be more specific is to use the figures more specifically uh, instead of trying to explain those figures in terms of very affected or severe, we can give specific figures uh, to actually impress whether how much the burden of the disease was and how much the people were affected. Again, instead of generically saying that health workers are not aware of case definitions, it would be better to actually provide details on what proportion of health workers who were interviewed actually were not able to give you the correct case definition, for example. Again, the, the, the use of general sentences and statements such as uh, you see uh, here uh, would be more to conclude or to summarize rather than to give the actual results. So they would find a place uh, in your discussion section where you're trying to summarize your results. Whereas in the results section, when you would want to actually give the actual figures uh, from the results of your findings. Again, objectivity is the key here. And uh, we need to focus on ideas which are relevant to the, the, the issues or the domain that you're writing the paper on. And uh, whatever you're writing needs to be consistent uh, with whatever evidence that you are generating through your study and not something that is subjective and that is either your opinion or your what, you, what interests you or something that uh, is uh, from either your perspective or from the perspective of the reader or somebody else's perspective. That is not something that we would uh, would be much appreciated in scientific writing compared to being writing very objective statements. So the, as the axiom goes, uh, be technical, not anecdotal. So need to avoid reporting any anecdotal events uh, that do not actually contribute to the technical aspects of the report. Uh, and again, uh, for example, here, uh, avoiding any of the administrative issues that may have been there in terms of doing the work that you are trying to write about in your manuscript and focusing on only the technical aspects of the work that was done. Another way to make sure that you are being specific and you are conveying the appropriate message is to use the right term to document the level of evidence that your findings are providing uh, to the hypothesis that you have generated. So uh, some of the words to avoid and to be replaced, for example, uh, the word show can be replaced by the word indicate. The verb prove can be replaced by, again, by indicate. Uh, reveal can be replaced by indicate or suggest. And it appears, uh, again, can be replaced by uh, the day, what the data suggests. So what I'm trying to tell you here is uh, gen overall you could probably uh, use, make use of these two words, suggest, uh, which is if your level of evidence is indirect or partial or not something that is clear from your findings and use the verb indicate uh, for findings where you have a very clear and direct evidence. Another commonly used word that is used uh, especially in the recommendation section of manuscripts is should. Again, the word should suggests passiveness and will. So uh, it's always, for example, instead of saying tuberculosis patients should be counseled, uh, which does not give a sense of direction. Uh, it is weak. Uh, it uh, it does not give an emphasis on, on your recommendation and it also does not tell us uh, who and why this should be done. A better way 
to be writing this kind of a recommendation would be to be straightforward and say, uh, for example, write counsel the tuberculosis patients in order to decrease the default rates. Uh, if you see this sentence, uh, it's more straightforward, it's stronger, uh, it's clear, and uh, it's, uh, it's derive, driving home the message that you are trying to give from your study that tuber counseling is important and why it is important. Again, one, uh, uh, something to avoid are general, undocumented, uh, negative or finger pointing statements specific to certain individuals uh, or certain events that may have, that may be part of your work and pref writing it in a more specific, documented and more, uh, so as to say, diplomatic or statements where you are providing it in a more positive manner and which also kind of denotes an opportunity for improvement rather than uh, a finger pointing of some, at something that negative that may have happened uh, in the way things would have been done. Uh, similarly, especially when you are giving recommendations, uh, providing positive statements is always uh, a, a good uh, practice. Another uh, couple of words that uh, we use and uh, are estimate, determine, uh, assess. Uh, again, uh, these words uh, need to be, uh, many a times we, uh, people use these uh, words uh, interchangeably. And uh, it uh, sort of becomes vague in terms of what they are trying to convey. Uh, so what we would suggest and recommend is that you use the word uh, estimate to denote something that is being measured and use the verb determine to denote uh, a hypothesis that is being tested uh, or some relationship that between uh, an outcome and an exposure or certain variables that are being examined or explored uh, in your work. Another uh, word to be wary of in your manuscript uh, is the word only. Uh, and why I say that is, again, we use, different people use the word only uh, uh, colloquially or uh, in their spoken language, uh, again, depending on the message they would want to give or just habit maybe. Uh, and as you can see on the screen, uh, a simple uh, statement such as I hit him in the eye uh, could actually mean something very different depending on where you position the word only in this sentence. Some of the other common errors that I would uh, like to emphasize here, uh, not that this is an exhaustive list, uh, but again, use of uh, and, use of but, uh, be mindful where you use them, make sure you're not connecting things that are not related to each other using these conjunctions. Uh, try to avoid indirect speech, avoid overuse of passive voice. Uh, again, remember that uh, we write uh, the different sections of a manuscript uh, in different tenses. Uh, some things are written in past tense. Most of the time the methods is basically what you did is something that's written in past tense, uh, whereas uh, the results are more in present tense or they sometimes in past tense and so forth. However, you need to maintain a consistency within the section in terms of which tense, tense you are using. So be mindful of that. Again, whether you're using first person or third person is something that you should be careful about. Uh, appropriate use of punctuations uh, commas, full stops, semicolons, apostrophe S, etc., uh, should be uh, carefully looked into. And uh, again, uh, for some of these common grammatical errors and issues, we also have softwares that can help you with that. Uh, even your word processor may point to some of the errors that it may think as errors, uh, but make sure that you are proofreading your manuscripts carefully 
to making sure that you are not uh, unduly uh, creating such kinds of errors. Another uh, important thing that needs to be kept in mind is the use of abbreviations and acronyms in your writing. Uh, generally, it's always better and it's preferred that you avoid abbreviations and acronyms and only use those which are very standard ones and those which are in common practice. Uh, for example, HIV, which stands for the human immunodeficiency virus or AIDS or for example, WHO. Uh, so there are only few uh, such abbreviations which are standard and which uh, are okay to use in your manuscript. But otherwise also do not try to create new abbreviations and acronyms uh, from tr in trying to save uh, space and trying to reduce the number of words, uh, which because that would again may not be something that is understood by everyone and can again offset your reading. So the take home message is that uh, we, although we may not be able to make, uh, you may not be able to make every reader understand everything that is written in your manuscript, uh, but uh, make sure that nobody misunderstands uh, anything that is written in your manuscript. So these are some of the suggestions and recommendations from our end in terms of how to uh, write uh, in terms of a style and language for manuscripts. Uh, always remember to check the journal that you are yet you intend to submit your manuscript to because they would be prescribing a certain style and, a, and maybe certain punctuations and uh, languages and words that they would prefer to use make sure to adhere to those and however do not forget these general recommendations in terms of making your manuscript uh, easily understandable to the majority of the readers. Thank you.